In previous videos, we integrated functions of two variables over rectangles. In this video, we'll integrate functions of two variables over more general regions, like this one. Suppose we want to find the integral of the function x squared plus 2y over the region d, drawn below, bounded by the parabolas y equals 2x squared, that's the blue curve on the bottom, and y equals 1 plus x squared, that's the red curve on the top. We can think of this integral as representing the volume between the surface z equals x squared plus 2y and the xy plane above this region here. Let's imagine slicing this volume with planes perpendicular to the yz plane. That'll give us vertical cross sections that might look something like this. The vertical cross sections correspond to different values of x along the x-axis. So I can write a of x to represent the area of the vertical cross section at position x. Then the total volume, or double integral, can be written as the integral of these cross-sectional areas integrated with respect to x, from x equaling the minimum x value, which looks like negative 1, to the maximum x value, which looks like 1. But the cross-sectional area itself can be thought of as an integral. It's the integral of my function, given here, integrated in the y direction, from the minimum y value, which is the y value on this curve, to the maximum y value, which is the y value on that curve. So I'll write that down. This expression here represents my a of x. But I still need to put down the bounds of integration, which are going to be y values. And notice how the y values that are the bounds of integration vary depending on x. So I can't just write them down as numbers. I have to write them down as functions of x. And in fact, the lower bound of integration is the y value lying on this curve, so that's 2x squared. And the upper bound of integration is the y value that lies on this red curve, so that's 1 plus x squared. Now I have an expression that I can integrate. I start from the inside and integrate this function with respect to y to get x squared y plus y squared that's going to be evaluated between the bounds 1 plus x squared and 2x squared. Notice those bounds are things I'm going to plug in for y. I'm still going to have to integrate that answer, whatever I get, with respect to x between x equals negative 1 and 1. So plugging in my bounds of integration, I get x squared times 1 plus x squared plugged in for y plus 1 plus x squared squared and that whole thing corresponds to plugging in the first bound of integration. Now I plug in the second bound of integration. That's x squared times 2x squared plus 2x squared quantity squared. All that will be integrated with respect to x. After simplifying and simplifying some more, we're in a position to integrate and that integral evaluates to 12 fifths. Let's use the same ideas to calculate the double integral of the function y over the region bounded by the straight line y equals x minus 1 and the parabola y squared equals 2x plus 6. It'll be helpful to know the coordinates of these intersection points and since they're not obvious from the graph we can find them by solving our two equations together. One way to do this is to plug in the expression x minus 1, which is equal to y in the first equation, in for the variable y in the second equation. So that gives that x minus 1 squared equals 2x plus 6. Distributing it out, this is x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 2x plus 6. So x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. I can factor this quadratic and get the x values of 5 and negative 1. By plugging these x values into my original linear equation, I see the corresponding y values, or y equals 4, 
and y equals negative 2. So the intersection points have coordinates 5, 4, that must be this point, and negative 1, negative 2, which must be that point. Now let's work on finding the integral. As before, we can think of the double integral as representing the volume between the surface, z equals y, and the portion of the xy plane within this region. Actually, in this case, it's better to think of it as a net volume, since the surface z equals y lies above the xy plane for part of the region and below the xy plane for another part. In the previous example, we sliced our volume by planes parallel to the yz plane to get vertical cross sections like this. But in this example, that would be complicated to do because some cross sections, like this one, stretch between the blue curve and the red curve, while other cross sections, like this one, have a base with both endpoints on the blue curve. Now that's not a total deal breaker. We could still compute our integral this way by first dividing our base into two pieces, one region over here and another region over here. But it's going to be a little simpler if we back up and use vertical cross sections that go the other direction. So I'm going to slice with planes parallel to the xz plane and get cross sections that look something like this. Now all of our vertical cross sections will stretch between the blue parabola curve and the red straight line curve, which will make it easier to write out our integrals and find the bounds of integration. This time our cross sections are indexed by the variable y. So we can write a of y as the cross-sectional area at a particular y value of y. Our double integral, or net volume, is going to be the integral as I integrate in the y direction of these cross-sectional areas. The bounds are going to go from the minimum y value, that's negative 2, to the maximum y value of 4. But the cross-sectional area itself can be thought of as an integral going in the x direction. We're going to integrate our original function, y, from the minimum x value to the maximum x value. Now these x values that are in the bounds of integration are not fixed numbers. They depend on y. So I need to write in my bounds of integration for the left bound this x value in terms of y. Since this curve is given by this equation, I can just solve for x. So x is y squared minus 6 over 2, and that gives me my left bound of integration as a function of y. And then for the right bound of integration, I can solve this equation for x. That gives me x equals y plus 1. So that's my rightmost bound of integration as a function of y. Now I'm ready to evaluate my inner integral. Remember that we're integrating with respect to x, not with respect to y. So the integral of y is yx, evaluated at the bounds of integration. And then we'll still have to integrate that answer with respect to y. So let me plug in these bounds and simplify. And I'll simplify a little further. And now I can integrate again and evaluate at my bounds of integration to get a final answer of 18. In our two examples so far, we've integrated over two types of regions. In the first type of region, looked like this, our boundary curves could be written with y as a function of x. The boundary curve satisfied the vertical line test. In the second type of region, that looked like this, our curves could be written with x as a function of y. Those boundary curves satisfy the horizontal line test. We'll call the first type of region a type 1 region, and the second type a type 2 region. For the first type of region, we can take cross sections going in this direction. So we're going to integrate first in the direction of y, and our bounds of integration are going to be y values written in terms of x. So that's going to be given by those functions g of x and h of x. That gives us the cross-sectional area, and then we integrate that cross-sectional area with respect to x, where our bounds of integration are given by 
the minimum and maximum x values. Here that's written as A and B. For a type 2 region, we're going to integrate instead in the x direction first. So our inner integral will be dx and our bounds of integration are x values that are written in terms of y in terms of these functions. That gives us a typical cross-sectional area and then we integrate that in the y direction from the minimum y value, which is written as c, to the maximum y value of d. From time to time, you might encounter a region that's both a type 1 region and a type 2 region. In that situation, you get to choose which way to integrate. And you might find that one way to integrate is simpler, easier to compute than the other. You also might encounter regions that are neither type 1 regions nor type 2 regions. In that situation, a nice trick is to divide the region up into a union of type 1 and type 2 regions and integrate over each piece separately. In this video, we integrated functions over type 1 regions by integrating first in the y direction and then in the x direction. And we integrated functions over type 2 regions by integrating first in the x direction and then in the y direction.